Good morning. <clears throat> ICAST 2022. Breakfast of Champions. Blueberry, honey yogurt, parfait. That's what I eat every morning. That's how I stay beautiful. All kinds of new stuff everywhere. Stuff you didn't even know was coming out. A little McStick, Mike McClellan got a little plus one, a little deeper version. Oh, hold it. <laughs> okay, and then hold it like in your hand. I'm just taking close up. Smile, CT. What's going on, Kyle Welch, your Bassmaster Street Series Pro here at ICAST. I'm going to talk about my number one favorite frog from Spro. This is the Spro Poppin' Frog, the original Poppin' Frog. This is my favorite one. I leave it on the front deck 95% of the time. It's got a little bit more slender, a little bit smaller profile than the original Bronze Eye Frog, but it still has this cut mouth, this popping mouth. Gives it a, a lot of wake in the water, creates a lot of disturbance in the water, has a lot of draw power. What that does is around wood, around sparse grass, or even thick grass, it, it draws those fish from a long way and, has, and doesn't have an overpowering profile that's going to be polarizing those fish. It's still going to generate a lot of bites. So I throw this around riprap, wood, grass, underdogs, everything that you can throw, and this is pretty much a four wheel drive top water bait. Kyle Welch, your Bassmaster Lee Series Pro here. I'm gonna give you my number one frog tip. Right here we have the Spro Poppin' Frog 60, the original. My number one thing I do with this frog is I trim the legs a little bit, but I take the hooks and I don't bend them up. I actually bend them out from the body so that they get a little bit more displacement away from the body. What that's gonna do is that frog's not gonna have to compress at all to actually get that hook going in the roof of that fish's mouth. So number one tip, bend the hooks out instead of up. All right, Kyle Welch, your Bassmaster Lee Series Pro here at ICAST. I've got the regular Spro Poppin' Frog here, but we've got a new one. This is the four-wheel drive. This is the covering water, whatever you want to do. This is the Spro Flappin' Frog. This thing generates a lot of water. I mean, kicks a lot of water, generates a lot of bites, makes a lot of disturbance, and you can go extremely fast with it. So this is this is going to be your covering water, four-wheel drive type of top water. What's going on, Kyle Welcher, Bassmaster Lee Series Pro, we're at ICAST, and we're breaking down the frogs today. So in my hand, we've got the original. This is the Bronze Eye Frog 60. This is the first frog ever, and this is still one that catches a lot of fish. This is the one that I look for whenever I'm on some thicker cover, like heavy mats, cheese mats, whatever it is, anywhere where like the popping frog kind of drags a little bit too much, like it gets a little bit too much stuff on the on the nose of it, I'm gonna wanna throw the, the more pointed nose style frog. This frog also has a big profile, but really a subtle action. So if you're chugging this frog along, walking this frog, it doesn't create a ton of disturbance in the water, but whenever those fish get curious and come look at it, it's still a really big profile. So those fish that are kind of not as aggressive, not chasing from quite as far, this is a really good frog that they bite even in open water or in a thick mat. So a little bit more subtle, but a little bit bigger profile. This is, this is the frog for all the heaviest cover. Now, the popping frog, the original popping frog, this is the one that I throw the most. I live in the south, we have a lot of aggressive fish that are kind of polarizing, and we, they'll chase this thing down from a long way. I like the popping mouth because it does create uh, a lot of disturbance in the water. It draws those fish from a long distance, but it's a little bit more slender profile. It's gonna be a little bit smaller of a profile than the original Bronze Eye Frog 60, but it's still gonna generate some really big bites. And I like this one because it skips extremely well. You can skip it way back up underneath cover, and it's got, you know, still has some super sharp hooks, some really strong hooks you can throw on a really big rod. So this is the frog that I throw the most all around. If I'm in more open water and not super thick cover, this could be the one that I throw. Now everybody knows how good the frog fishing can be on like the Tennessee River, Lake Gunnersville, Lake Chickamauga, all those places. Well, this is a frog that's been I'm getting a lot of play over there for a while now. This is the King Daddy Frog. This is a big one. For whatever reason, when those fish get in that really funky mood in like October, November, whenever those mat, those hydrilla flats are super thick, super dense, this is a frog that still generates a ton of bites because those mats are so thick there that this big frog still creates a little bit of disturbance and those fish can track that through the mats and come up and, and still figure out where this frog is and still, you know, take a bite at, at it. But it's just a really good frog around those big fish that live on the Tennessee River, those F1 hybrids that really seem to like really big profiles and they're used to eating big baits. So it's a really good one on the Tennessee River whenever those, those mats are really thick. 
Another one we have is kind of a new one. This has only been out for about a year. It's called the Spro Flapping Frog. This is one that's kind of, it's, all, it's a little bit more similar to a buzz bait, but it's gonna have even better hookups because it's a, a, a elastomer product. It's got like a really, really soft body, really stretchy legs, gonna be extremely durable, but it's also got nano-coated hooks. So you can, you don't have to have the more traditional like super heavy frog rod for this because it's got such a soft body and such those, those nano-coated hooks are so sharp, it's really easy to get this bait in and, and penetrate the hooks in the roof of those fish's mouth. So this is a really good bait for just covering what with, skipping under docks, the edge of grass lines, anywhere they're really chasing on bait for long distances you need to cover water, it's another really good frog for that scenario. So it's kind of kind of your little hybrid frog. It's like a buzz bait that you can throw anywhere. It's a pro flapping frog. Just came by the Spro booth. We got a couple of cool new things from Spro for this year. We got one <laughs> we got one little crankbait. And we've got a big giant swim bait on the go. So, both ends of the spectrum. Everybody knows the glide bait thing. That's been taken over. Seen a lot of brands coming up with it, a lot of different types coming up with it. But Spros came out with a KGB Chad Chad, which is, if you know anything about custom garage kind of swim baits, that's like the gold standard in swim baits. Spro came out with one, partnered with KGB. So, pretty cool. 180 millimeters long, and then you've got a little bitty tiny crankbait, so kind of the best of every world over here today. What's the crankbait? This is called the Speed Demon. Little, fast. You know, it's gonna be one to cover water with pretty, pretty quick. Deflect a lot. Gonna be pretty buoyant. Also came out with a Rock Crawler 50 DD. So small size Rock Crawler, which is one I throw a ton that dives a little bit deeper. So lots of new stuff. Always lots of new stuff from <laughs> Spro that I cast. All right, we're gonna talk about Hunter's favorite product from 13 for the 2022 season, the Modus SZ2. Y'all might have got a little glimpse of this on the front deck a couple times throughout the year. I've been using this reel pretty good bit for winding stuff around. I had it in the 7.3 to 1 gear ratio reel, so I've been throwing, you know, vibrating jigs, chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, stuff like that on it. Cool thing about this is 13's had these CZB bearings for a while. They've always been in the higher price point reels, like the Concept Z, the $300 reels, $350 reels. They've had these polymer CZB bearings in them. Well now, the Modus is gonna be a lot lower price point reel that still has the performance of these polymer bearings. So I'm actually pretty excited about that because people are gonna get to experience this at a more affordable rate. So really good reel, use this thing a ton. It's got polyurethane handles, a little bit different feel than most reels on the market, but still pretty cool. But the biggest thing is these CZB bearings at a lower price point reel, a lot of people are gonna be able to experience that and get to play around with them some this year. So pretty cool one and it looks good. The biggest thing is, is a door. It's purple. It's Matt Gray and purple. Hunter's favorite. Beautiful. At 13 Fishing Booth now, this is the rod right here. This is the 7 foot 4 NV Medium Light. This one I just weighed in 15 smallmouth on. It's got the Fuji SIC guides on it. When those fish start taking drag, these guides are going to be super hard, super smooth, and you're going to have the smoothest drag you can get. The guides are going to help you with that. It's also got the Fuji hook keeper. Take my drop shot weight, just slide underneath there. It's really easy for me. But I like that little bit extra length. I like that seven foot four rod in that current, in those waves, making a little bit longer cast, seeing those fish on forward face on or making 80, 90 foot cast. And then whenever those fish go crazy at the boat, which we all know those smallmouth do, that seven foot four has a little more load to it. It's a little harder for those fish to get any slack in the line because this rod's going to load a little bit deeper, have a little bit more more low to the rod so the 7.4 was the one i chose this year i waited all 15 bass on this exact rod at the same time barbecue i'm at the fuji booth 2022 icast that's pretty much most of the new stuff that caught my eye from my sponsor anyway that's where i spent most of my time is at the booth that i have to be at but uh that's most of the new stuff. That's pretty much a wrap on it. It'll be open tomorrow. It's already starting to slow down. So, SciCast 2022.